everywhere. That's Fleetwood Mac on Dan Radio Style. Hope everybody out there is having themselves a great day. We did have a sort of request, and I, I didn't do the whole thing, but uh, I figure, what the heck, let's go ahead and do like 11 seconds of it. It is a great song by Tom Jones. Uh, what is it? What do we call it? <laughs> help yourself. Just help yourself to my lips, to my arms. Just say the word and they are yours. Just help yourself to the love. In my heart, your smile has opened up the door. There you go, Pamela. <laughs> I played a little of it. That's actually a funny song, and I, the video was very, very funny. Anyway, sorry we got off track, but I'm having a, a fun time. Here's three things to attract your soulmate. One thing that definitely helps attract your soulmate is having fun more often. Oh, well, there was a little bit of a reason for all my nonsense. Now it wasn't there. So uh, one thing I kind of want to cover is... um. One thing I have always believed, and I've heard people sell this as a limiting belief, and so if it is, it is. I don't really care. It's just how I view things. But I am going to probably offer uh, a little bit of a deeper understanding to it, so then we'll see where we go from there. But I have always believed everything happens for a reason. Now, generally, I believe the reason is us. In fact, like 98% of the time, or maybe a little more, it is us. It's our thinking. It's what we're doing and all that. And I've been able to see that through my whole life. But there have been times in my life where hindsight was 2020. I was able to see why something didn't happen after it didn't happen and then something else happening later on. So I can say for sure that most of the time playing the numbers and when we say it all the time, I know Anya and Pamela and everybody, right? We're all saying the same thing is you can definitely make this happen. You can manifest things. Might be an issue of time, might be an issue of effort, might be an issue of, I don't know, you know, all the things that might have to be fixed and cleaned up and, you know, made better within yourselves. But it definitely can happen. But there is that like 2% of the time and... Usually, just be, you finally just kind of give up if that's the case. I'm not saying any of you are in that category, but this show kind of ties to that too. For people that are looking for love, for people that are maybe in that place right now where you know we're trying to get our specific person back for sure, or maybe there's someone just that we randomly know that maybe doesn't really know us that we're trying to kind of get something going on with. One of the first key steps to really making this happen, and I'm reasonably sure most everybody that listens to these YouTubes is in this category because you're listening to this YouTube. The very fact that you're listening to this YouTube puts you in the category of working on yourself. All of us are certainly in different, like, varying places, varying degrees of, of, of where we're at in that spectrum of helping ourselves. Some people uh, have come a long way and, you know, really are getting it all down and really just love themselves or very involved in their own lives and really just enjoying themselves day to day to day. And it makes them a very, very attractive person to others. And then when that occurs, you know, you're probably very close to seriously finally solidifying that, that final, you know, 30 miles that I was talking about in the last show. But if there's some of us that are still getting angry all the time and still, you know, frustrated most of the time, well, keep working on it. But that's really an important key ingredient is having this sort of work done. I mean, it doesn't have to be finished. You don't have to be like a masterpiece. You don't have to be like Rembrandt or uh, Michelangelo or Donatello or Leonardo or whoever. I don't, you know, whatever. Fill in f famous artists here. You don't have to be done, but you definitely want to be worked through some of the basic rudimentary stuff, which to me is kind of where you get angry easy, where you uh, jump, jump quick, like, ah, he's not this, right? Like if you're quick to go like into the negative, ah, you got work to do. Don't even, don't worry about the relationship just yet. Focus on you completely until that doesn't really happen. Until you can generally give the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, you're going to get scared sometimes. Yeah, it's not going to be perfect. But when you're jumping to anger, when you're jumping to violence, when you're jumping to total frustration, these are not good emotions. They're negative emotions. When you're jumping to fear, that's a self-love thing. That's like... That's different. That's not anger. You're not mad at them. You're scared. That's totally different. When you're angry, when you're frustrated, when you're hurt, like if they're hurting you still, that's, we need to do more work. So again, this is just to help gauge for where you're at in this whole spectrum of things. If you're finding yourself getting hurt, angry, frustrated quickly or generally, 
Keep working on yourself. Don't worry about the relationship just yet. Yeah, do the imaginal stuff, but seriously, focus number one is you. You. You should be your focus. You should be imagining stuff about you, about figuring out how to do this, having higher self conversations with yourself on how I can move through this. For the, those that are almost done, that's where you're going to end up. So it's a beautiful process. So again, working on ourselves and to remind everyone, and I've said it a bunch, but I'll say it again, we attract what we are. So what we're putting out there is what we're attracting. So if you're attracting people that are like, eh, right, then it's like, okay, well, that's your eh right now. But if you're attracting like people that you're like, wow, that's not my SP, but wow, you know, like, <laughs> well, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. It's a good indicator. It means you've got this energy and people are approaching you suddenly. Animals are walking up to you, wagging their tails, right? I mean, you know, whatever the case is. Maybe birds land on your shoulders. Butterflies just fly with you all day long. These things maybe happen, right? Because you've got it all dialed in. So number two, put out a signal or intention. So once you got all this self-work done, you kind of want to put out the intention of, all right, I'm ready to find my soulmate. I'm ready to find my love. I'm ready to make this happen. I'm ready for me and my SP to finally come together. Like seriously, you get it already. You've worked on enough stuff. And then now you pretty much say, all right, I'm, I'm ready. Because if it's taken a long time, and I'm guilty of this too, if it's taken a long time, there's reasons why. And there's probably some blockages or probably stoppages that you've put in place. So once we finally see it and set it and go, yeah, no, I'm actually ready for it. I, yes, I would like this to happen now. Universe, thank you. Make it so I am actually ready. And once you kind of put that intention out there, and I know a lot of us are putting that intention out, but if you haven't done step one sufficiently, yeah, it doesn't matter. It, it, what you're, you're attracting what you are. So you're trying to attract something that's not vibrating at the same frequency. And so it's just, you're not compatible. You're not congruent. It's, you can't get together that way. You can get together if you guys are vibrating at similar energies. If you're not vibrating at similar energies, it makes it very tricky. If you're vibrating higher than them, for example, right, and you finally get them back, because you probably will in that case, you actually might find after a period of time, you're like, yeah, no, I really, really am not happy in this relationship. And you'll find yourself leaving possibly again or leaving. If they're vibrating above you, it may never happen, or they may just you know, push you aside after a date or two and be like, yeah, no. If you're at the same place, oh, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. When you put that indication out and you're actually in that beautiful place and, you've, and you're feeling it and you are it, then the third step, and this is so important, and so many people that make comments anyway don't seem to capitalize on this one. So this is for most everybody out there. You have to, and this is in all success in life, everything. If you want to be successful in anything, anything, relationships, money, wealth, happiness, finances, uh, finding directions, finding something at the grocery store, anything at all that you wish to be successful. Step three is key. Take advantage of the opportunity. If they go walking by your house and you're inside looking out because you know they walk by your house every day and you desperately want to talk to them but haven't, take the opportunity. Opportunity. Otherwise, stop staring out the peephole. Not saying you're doing that, but again, right? If you're finding yourself in situations where you're seeing them from afar, walk up to them. I don't care if you're shy. That's the thing you need to work on then right now is getting over your shyness and getting over it now. Because there's your opportunity. And to sit there far away and go, no, I'm going to manifest him landing on me. No, it doesn't generally work like that. Universe will get you in proximity. We're like, we're like planets orbiting, right? And it's like, all right, I can get you guys close, but you're going to have to help me. And so it'll pop you out, poof. And you'll get out close, right? And you'll swing right by them. Here they are. And you don't say anything. You just go right by and you go, oh, he's cute. Done. You, maybe you get another chance, but you have to capitalize. Sometimes we get that first one just to go, seriously, look how close you were. You have to capitalize. There's a story that I heard, and it was pretty cool, and it was two people that actually were meeting up in some meeting, but they didn't know each other or anything like that, and they got in this meeting, and 
um, the, the lady was, she's typically late, I guess is still because these people have gotten married and have spent a long time together. It's a really cute story, but she's always late. So anyway, he's at this meeting, right? And there's no tables or seats left except for the one sitting directly across him because she was late. And when she showed up and he'd already done his work on one, he'd already basically said, yeah, no, I just kind of got to a point where I felt like I was ready for love. He got the indication put out there. That's all he said. Yeah, I'm ready for love. I'm ready for this. Not looking. Not, where is it? Oh, where's the love at? No. I'm ready for it. Yeah. Bring it. This is cool. This will be cool when it happens. I'm really looking forward to it. And they sat across from each other. Didn't know each other. It wasn't like fireworks. But it was an instant chemistry. An instant like, oh, she's very attractive. And she was like, oh, he's really attractive. They were both attracted to each other. Outside of that wasn't anything else, but they started talking. They dialogued, and it turned into a, they were talking when the meeting left, right? And they're walking out. And they set up another time to chit-chat, pass up numbers and all that stuff. And it just happened. You have to take the opportunity. You have to. It will feel significant. It's not like walk up to everyone that walks in your path, just be like staring at it. You know, every person that walks by, is that you? You know, just looking like a freak. No, no, it's not like that. It will be apparent. They will sit in front of you. They will bump into you and be like, oh, my God, you want to turn around and deck them. You're like, oh, no, pretty girl. I'm I'm kidding. I don't usually jump to violence. Using it for the effect of, you know, humor, hopefully. But taking advantage of the situation. I have gotten multiple voiceover jobs from just talking about it, even at the coffee shop. Talking about certain people will pop up. It'll come up in conversation because I know each we've known each other for a while. And it's just like we're finally talking about stuff that we never have mentioned before. And they're like, oh, you do voiceover? And it's like, yeah. And they're like, dude, I just we just had to hire a guy last week because I knew he did this whole thing. And I hit him up. And he's like, yeah. So I gave him my cards. So it kind of works out that way. You've got to take advantage of the opportunities when they show up in front of you. And that is how you capitalize. Again, rule number one, huge, huge. You've got to gauge yourself on that. That is the biggest the biggest thing. And I know a lot of you hate that. And they're like, well, no, Goddard says and this and that. Yeah, I know, I get you. But from the people that are really trying hard to help everybody, when you're not in a healthy space yourself, and I think I'm sure Goddard, someone help me out with this. I'm sure Goddard quotes that somewhere. I know law of attraction gets all over. It's all over the place. And certainly a number of other sources that I've read over the years. So it's out there all over the place. You've got to be cool with yourself. You've got to be content with yourself. And when you are a majority of the time, you're good to go. Now you can start doing the indications. Now you can start asking. Put that signal out there, intention. I keep calling indication. It's intention. Keep putting it out there. And be cool. Continue to be cool. Like rule number one has to exist. That's your foundation. Then you bump up. Then it's like like you're kicking it up a notch. But your foundation's still rule number one. You're never allowed to go back on rule number one. In fact, you're supposed to keep working on rule number one because it'll help reinforce as you get up to rule number three. So keep that evolution going. Keep that as a long-term plan. Get yourself out of the initial nasty. Start step two. But keep working on yourself. Keep being happy. Keep finding more things you're interested in. Keep reading different sources, different materials, different videos, different whatever. And you will find that you and your soulmate, your love, your true companion, your... Ah, it's a great Mark Cohn song. Love that song, by the way. All of these people, specific person, blah 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 everything will be in your path. And it's something that can happen. Again, almost all of the time, it is possible. Yes, no matter what, no matter what's going on right now, it doesn't mean anything. Now, there's places where I think you've got moral decisions that you might want to make, whether or not you want to continue trying to put pressure on the situation, because maybe it's not best for all involved. And I've said that before. And I think that's one of those cases in my life anyway, and looking back where I didn't get what I was trying to get. And then looking back on it, first off, I got something way more appropriate, way more appropriate. Just, I mean, like night and day different. It was so awesome. And it never made me question, like, I've always known that I'll either manifest it or if I don't, there's something very, very cool for me. And that's cool. And I'm fine with that. You know what I mean? It's just always been cool that way. Hopefully this helps. I don't know. We'll see. 
We'll see how it all plays out in the big picture. We're going out with a very cool song uh, that really wow, brought back some air. I want to say it was the 80s, early 80s probably. Very groovy band uh, that I really, really liked. Uh, they're called Asia, and it's uh, Only Time Will Tell, Dan Radio Style.